What is up guys? We are back with another video and we have another big ass CPU cooler. Today we're checking out the Noctua NHD15 Chromax Black. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now the NHD15 from Noctua is not necessarily a new cooler. We actually reviewed the original cooler all the way back in 2014. The new thing of course is the colorway or just the color. Um, you know, Noctua is known for their brown fans and some people love the color, some people hate the color, but the thing about the color is that it makes it really hard to match a cooler with the rest of your components. There's not many, um, you know, brown components out there. It, it makes it so you have to mod everything. So the big change with this is Chromax. So they introduced Chromax, I believe at the end of 2019, and it basically gave, you know, some of their most popular coolers different colors. And here we have the Chromax black. And what that does, it basically blacks out the entire cooler. So, you know, the fans, they're not the brown, they're all black. Even the uh, vibration dampeners on the fans are all black. Of course, the heat sinks black, all the heat pipes are black. Even the fan clips on the actual cooler itself is black. So beyond the color, the second thing that you're really gonna notice is the size of this cooler. This is going to be one of the largest CPU coolers out there. I'll go ahead and put the official dimensions sort of like right here. And the dimension you really want to know is the height. At its tallest, this is 165 millimeters, which is basically the max for a lot of mainstream mid tower cases. So definitely keep that in mind. Starting with the fans on this cooler, you have a fan in the front of the cooler and then one in the center between the two main heatsink towers. Now these fans are Noctua's own NF A15 HS PWM fans. And of course we have the Chromax black versions. These fans feature an SSO2 bearing and have a max speed of 1500 RPM with a max airflow of 82.51 CFM and a max noise level of 24.6 dBA. As we look at the cooler from the side, we can see that we do have a dual tower design. So dual tower, dual fan. Again, this is one really beefy cooler. Now towards the bottom of each heatsink stack, we do have a cutout. And this is to make sure you don't have any clearance issues with your memory or heat sinks around your CPU socket. Looking at the rear of the cooler, we can really get an idea of how the heat pipes go up into the actual heatsink towers. Also, if you're wondering, you can actually install a third fan on the back here or move one of the two fans to the back if it better suits your configuration. The heat pipes converge at the base of the cooler, which is really the only part that isn't black. Here we have a nice nickel plated copper base that has a great finish on it. While it's not a mirror finish, it's actually one of the better finishes that I've seen on a CPU cooler lately. When it comes to installation, Noctua is using their Secure Firm 2 mounting system. This mounting system is the one that Noctua has been using for years. So if you have installed a Noctua cooler in the past, this installation should be pretty easy for you. We're gonna be doing our installation on an Intel Z490 motherboard. So the installation should be the same across all LGA 1200, 1150, 1151, and 1155 sockets. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take the Intel backplate and place it through the back of your motherboard. Next, install the black spacers, then the mounting bars on top of them, securing them with the included thumb screws. Now, depending on the orientation that you want your CPU cooler, you can either install the mounting bars on the top or bottom, or the sides of the CPU socket. We went ahead and installed them on the top and bottom because we want the cooler exhausting out the rear of our case. Now apply the included thermal paste and then remove at least the center fan from the cooler. I actually removed both just to make things easier. Then carefully place the cooler on top of your CPU, lining up the screws with the threads on the mounting bars. With the included screwdriver, secure the cooler. Now go ahead and reinstall your fans. The front fan is probably gonna sit right on top of your memory. So this probably isn't going to be a cooler that you're gonna to wanna to use with RGB memory. Then go ahead and connect the fans to the supplied Y connector 
Finally, connect the Y connector to the CPU fan header on your motherboard. For testing, we use ADA64's CPU package reading for our temperatures, and then for sound levels, we use a Rise Pro sound level meter, which is placed three inches above the top of the case. Our idle test is taken on the Windows 10 desktop after our system has been powered on for one hour. The low test is the ADA64 system stability test with just the CPU selected. And then our low two test is the same test with both CPU and FPU selected. Now let's get on to testing. Here are the specifications of our test system. As we look at the results from our tests, we can see why Noctua is Noctua, right? Why they're always at the top of the list when it comes to air coolers, why they're always what I recommend if a friend is asking me, you know, what's the best air cooler that I should get? Nine times out of 10, it's always Noctua. And with this cooler, it's really cool because, you know, we reviewed this all the way back in 2014, and it's really cool to see see it now go against some of the, you know, some of the newest coolers out there and still really hold its weight. And actually, I mean, in our testing, it was the best cooler as far as pure performance out there. Um, it beat both the Deepcool AK620 as well as the Be Quiet Dark Rock TF2. It was a little bit louder than the Be Quiet Dark Rock TF2, um, but again, this cooler does come with a low noise adapters if you wanna connect them to the fans if you want, um, but I don't think it's that loud. It's not a loud cooler at all. Um, during our full crazy load test, it wasn't all that loud. Um, you know, and what's cool cool about this cooler is, is it's huge. Like it's this massive big cooler. Um, and you would think that it would be crazy hard to install, but it's really not. Um, it's, you know, the Noctua mounting system, which I've used for years has not changed and it's incredibly easy. Everything um, with this cooler is really, really easy. Now I would say if you are installing in a case, especially a smaller case like this, um, it's gonna be easier to do it outside of the case, but I wouldn't put, put it past you to do it inside of the case you can, but it's gonna be a little bit harder, mainly because of the fan clips and all of that. Um, but overall, like I said, this is the best cooler that we've tested so far. It looks great, and that's the cool thing is that you know you have the color choice now with a Noctua cooler. You don't have to go for those brown fans that again, people either like or they hate. Um, you know, we have this all black cooler, which is gonna match most motherboards and graphics cards out there because most motherboards and graphics cards are pretty much black with like an accent color. Um, so you have that. And it's, I really like the attention to detail too that Noctua did. Not only is, you know, you have the black heat sink with the black fans, but the heat pipes, um, you know, are all uh, black. Even the mounting hardware is all black. The fan clips are all black. So just some nice attention to detail there, which I really like. Now, this cooler is not cheap by any means. It's $109.95 uh, at Amazon right now. So it's on the higher end, but you have to remember that this cooler is going to compete against, you know, 240 millimeter AIOs that are out there. Um, so yeah, I think it's a great cooler. I think it is on the high end, but again, its performance speaks for itself. So if you have any questions about this cooler, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next video.